the toadstools are spreading rapidly. If nothing is done, they'll cover both me and my well. Stop them, I beg you. Okay, but how? How do I stop toadstools from growing? Uh... The man in the well is desperate to ward off the toadstools. What are the enemies of toadstools? What do they not like? Oh. There's a light inside of you. It's so fun to just play with these. Okay. I don't have the shovel anymore, so I can't just dig them up. I apparently can't touch them. The toadstool trembled wildly as the creature touched it. Once again, I have no idea what to do. The small creature quietly listened as the wingless Alva began to sing a sad, enchanting melody while looking towards the dark sky. Wait, I'm sorry, what? I, okay, I just looked at the walkthrough again. Once again, I'm very glad I did. Here's the solution. The solution is apparently to use the nettles here. The Brunescuba let out a calm sigh at the sight of the nettles. That should do the trick. At least for a while. The Brune Scuba looked at the creature. You need to escape this place. You can't stay here. The toadstools will soon engulf this part of the forest. Hurry! Flee while you still can! Who knew toadstools were so dangerous? Okay, time to leave, but how? Where? As the creature turned around, it noticed the increasing amount of ominous toadstools beginning to move a bit too close for comfort. Heeding the Brunescuba's warning, it decided to find a way to leave the lake. The sad Alva! The small creature suddenly remembered. Without wings, she won't be able to escape by herself. But what can I do? I have nothing. Whoa. Where? What in the hell? The toadstools are apparently working for the hag. And that's the alpha. It was about to be boiled, I guess. Where, where am I? I'm here. What the hell? 
the nestlings, the nestlings are hungry. Holy crap, that thing is terrifying looking. Look at its claws. Its bony hands. And its claws. A few squeaking nestlings were spread along the cliff's edge. What are you so worked up about? The creature asked the squeaking chick. The blind chick eagerly nibbled after the creature's fingers. Okay, let's not touch them. I don't want to lose my fingers. Oh, be quiet. The hag was tenderly staring her hot concoction, only stopping briefly to look up at her scrawny younglings. In her hand, she held the wingless Alva, ominously dangling her back and forth beside the large cauldron. The hag prefers to build her nest on top of tall mountains, spreading her vile magic throughout the surrounding areas, infecting plant and creature alike. If you happen to come upon one of her minions, be wary not to get caught, as they will surely bring you before her. Okay. Well, it's kind of too late for that at this point, isn't it? I've already been brought here. Hello. Would you please put her down? You're hurting her. The small creature said warily, but got no response. The old hag was too busy stirring her brew to take any notice of the creature. There's gotta be something I can do with this pole here. And of course I still have my runes to try. A large pole, used for suspending ingredients, was towering above the small creature. What's that dangling up there? The small creature thought as it gazed up at the far end of the pole. The rope connected to the large pole was securely tied with a difficult knot. Okay. Let's see, so to get me out of this situation, I have dried flowers, an iron coin, an empty bottle, a money tablet, and some blackberries. Hmm. Foot. The foot is actually a separate thing. Ooh, it, retract, it retracted when I got near. Hmm. The hag was tenderly staring her hot concoction. The hag preferred... The old... Hmm. I must be able to do something with her foot. Also, what's in this hole? She needs my help. The creature gathered its courage as it took a determined step away from the hole. Yeah, I'm not going to leave her here. Not after I just tried to save her. Okay, let's try the runes. Whoa, earthquake. Ew. Makes her salivate. Wind. Okay, so I can do earthquake and wind, basically. Everything else does, as far as I can see, nothing of use. Can I put some blackberries inside of the concoction? Hmm. I really don't see what I can do. The blind chick. Hmm. 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 
and throwing a coin at its face is apparently not the solution. What if I've missed an object in the environment? No, doesn't look like it. There's gotta be something I can do with the earthquake. But what can I do with that? I have no idea. Hmm. Would you like some flowers? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's walkthrough time again. Okay. Very first step in the walkthrough I have not done. Apparently I need to gather some of the brew up in my empty bottle. The creature filled the bottle with a fresh batch of the hag's colorful brew. Even though you'd think it would be very pissed off, and also I don't seem to be high enough to actually be able to do that. But okay, what do I do with it? Maybe spice it up with some blackberries? Hmm. Mm. Dried flowers? Hmm. No. Feed it to one of the nestlings? As the creature fed the warm brew to the squeaking chick, it coughed up a decomposing part of a previous meal. Ew. Upon being fed, the chick quietened down, and a content look came over its previously agitated face. Meanwhile, the creature took the opportunity to quickly grab the smelly ingredient off of the ground. That is really disgusting. Ugh. An oily onion. What the f... Can I get more? Something seems to be missing. The creature said as it watched the colorless brew. Yeah, where did the color go? It's gone. What am I going to do with an oily onion? Put it into the pot? Apparently, yes. What am I doing? Okay. Flammable bru... What? Uh, my head. No. Just, what? What? <laughs> I'm extremely amused at how little these puzzles make any sense. So I took the color out of the brew by taking some of it, and that removed all color for some reason. And then I fed it to one of the nestlings, and then it coughed up an oily onion, and then I popped the onion inside of the brew, and that turned it yellow, and then I poured the brew into... into my bottle, and that took away all the yellow, and now it's flammable. Uh, okay. Right. Hmm. Well, can't add in any berries for good measure. Alright, so what do I do with it? Hmm. Throw it at your foot? Doesn't work. Throw it at the bowl. Hmm. Doesn't work. Hmm. Throw it at one of the nestlings, or feed it to it. Okay, that worked. And that gave me a piece of sugar beet. What am I doing? Okay, so they're coughing up stuff that allows me to then get it, but what am I 
sweet brew. Do they always cough up the same thing? Let's find out. They do. That is really gross. Putrid hogweed. Ugh. Acidic brew. Could I... Eat through the rope? Okay. Good, good. Maybe do this? No, I still can't reach it. The corrosive brew had severed the rope, but the sack of ingredients had become stuck between a pair of nails. A large pole. You... Can I throw some on the nails? No. Alright, what is this one going to give me? Ugh. Stiff rat tail. Okay. Apparently the color the color of a rat tail is blue. Chilled brew. And that made it cold. Okay. Not sure that's gonna help. And indeed it didn't. Yeah, it's a sugar beet, so that's the sweet one. Don't think that one's gonna help me either, but let me just try that again. And let me just try this. Actually, maybe what about the wind? Okay, that worked. Although it didn't actually seem to do anything. Something is inside of the cauldron. Something seems. Yeah, this hag apparently does not care at all about what I'm doing because I am messing with its cauldron again and again, changing its color and taking fluids in and out, but it doesn't care. Doesn't give a damn. Laser focused on stirring. I admire that. Right, so there's a thing inside, but I don't even know what it is. So, how does that help? Maybe I need to make it acidic so that it eats through whatever the thing was. Who had acid? Was you? I think it was you. Yeah. Hmm. Didn't seem to work. Hmm. Let's try a different one. It's got to be one of these that has some sort of an effect. 
Yeah, cold. Let's try cold. Ooh. They stopped stirring. It stops them from stirring, doesn't it? I noticed that its foot isn't going in anymore. The hag was ten. The hag. But what could I do with its foot? Hmm. Blackberries. Hmm. No. What could I do with its foot? Uh. Just to be sure, it is the fact that it's cold that's making her stop stirring, right? Yeah. Or is it? Wait, maybe it's not. Has she been doing that the entire time? Hmm. How come her foot isn't going in anymore? Alright, so I can make it oily. I can make it sticky, I can make it acidic, and I can make it cold. I am accomplishing absolutely nothing. Help! Walk through! Help! I need your help! Mm -hmm. Let's see. So we're supposed to pour the acidic brew onto the rope. Uh huh. Fling the bag of ingredients hanging from it into the cauldron, obscuring the hag's vision. Okay, so that's what's happened, I guess. It's obscured her vision. And then apparently I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to make it oily. Make it flammable. And then throw it onto her foot. Okay. And then probably fire rune. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> As the fire blazed, sparks from the embers landed on the hag's foot, igniting the flammable brew. Aggravated by the burn, she quickly released the wingless Alva from her clutch, turning her attention towards the small creature. I'd better hurry! It exclaimed, feeling the hag's rage building. Chapter 3, Beneath the Surface. the Alva fell from the hag's grasp. The creature saw its chance, and with the tiny being on its shoulder, tumbled down into the safety of the mountain. As their eyes slowly became accustomed to the darkness, a massive cave opened up before them. The creature beheld it in silence for a while, before remembering its new acquaintance. Are you all right? It asked. The Alva gave the creature a faint smile, removing a couple of pebbles from her fragile hands. At least she won't be able to get us down here. Why do you think she was so interested in you? The Alva tilted her head, apparently as puzzled as the small creature. Well, 
No matter now. I guess we need to explore these caves for another exit. The creature said. I still have a promise to keep, don't I? The wingless Alva looked up at the creature, her glow slightly more vibrant than before. Oh, I'm gonna make good on my promise. Look at the little Alva on my shoulders. Well, not on my shoulders, on my... On my head, I guess. I don't even know if I have shoulders. I don't think I do. What the hell? It's a... It's a glass shard inside of a gigantic foot that looks like it's made out of stone. But I see blood. Hold on, let's check at the left first. And there's nothing there. What's that wiggling? The light from the opening revealed a large cave. In here we should be safe from her grasp. The small creature said to its friend, both of them letting out a sigh of relief. Looks like a stick. The entrance to the chamber was too high up for the small creature to reach. Can I blow it down? Aha, I can. Get in the hang of these runes. The wind had caused a twig to fall onto the cave floor. Where did you come from? The small creature asked the twig. The small creature picked up the twig, thinking it might be of some use. Maybe I could make some sort of a slingshot. Hmm, makes the glass shard glint. Not sure what that one does. Woo! Okay. Yeah, let's not do that. I don't want a rock to fall on my head. A large rock shaped like a foot was sticking up from the cave floor. Hmm. The creature uttered as it put its own tiny foot against the rock to compare sizes. Other than its peculiar shape, the formation felt just like any other rock. It's like some giant fell here and was turned into stone and then got buried by a mountain, incorporated into it over time. Can I grab it? Can I pull it out? The creature didn't want to risk cutting itself on the glass shard. Yeah, much too risky. Bash it with a muddy tablet? Hmm. No. Oh, I just realized what this does. It makes it bleed. Ew. Alright, I can go to the tunnel or the strange formation. Let's go to the strange formation. Strange stalagmite. They look kind of like beings. And apparently they are, as I just clicked this and found out. Hmm. It brings them to life for some reason. Oh, hi! It's a little... What is that? Insect of some sort. The floor had collapsed into a seemingly endless abyss. I don't think I want to know what's down there. The creature said to itself as it peered into the darkness. The small creature peeked over the edge and began to shiver in fright. 
Let's give that hole a wide berth. Vata are nervous beings that hide from others by blending in with their environment. They prefer to make their home below the ground far away from other creatures. Brother, I think we've been discovered. The tall Vata whispered nervously to the short one. Nonsense, the short Vata said with a confident look. Just stick to the plan. But the beast is not leaving, the tall Vata whispered, making a befuddled face. Why is the beast not leaving? As long as our dear brother returns with something to get our belongings out of the hole, we just stick to the plan, all right? The short Vata whispered, giving his brother a stern look. Right! The tall Vata responded loudly, straightening his back in attention. Apparently they think they still haven't been found out, even though they obviously have. Okay. There are oddly shaped rock formations throughout the tunnels. I do see what looks to be an indentation where maybe a third one could go. Hmm, let's keep looking. As they walked through the dark tunnels, the creature turned to the Alva. I'm sorry you were taken from your home at the lake. I don't know if I could find my way back there. It said with an apologetic look. But the Alva didn't seem saddened. In fact, she appeared to glow brighter than before, if only by a little. Apparently the Alva's very happy. Which is good. Yeah, look at it glow. It's almost a light source. A thick root had violently burst through the wall. It must take great determination to be able to push through something as hard as rock, the creature said to itself as it pondered if it could do the same. The root was sticky from the thick sap sipping through the small holes in the bark. Must be more in here. Alright, so we have some sap here. Could come in handy. A view of the outside. The moonlight slipped in through a large crack in the wall, illuminating the chamber floor. I wonder if we will ever make it out of this somber place. The creature said to the wingless Alva as they both took a moment to gaze at the starlit sky. After taking a closer look, the creature decided that climbing out through the opening would be too dangerous. Agreed. Let's not do that. Is there anything else in here? Doesn't seem to be. Oh! Okay then. Further in we go. Into the large chamber. Let's light that torch. Groofrin? What does that mean? Groofrin? Gro Groofrin? That is incredibly hard to say. Gruff, Groofrin? Groofrin? 
Yeah. That does not roll off the tongue well. Dried up river. Abandoned mine. Chasm. A wide chasm had split the chamber floor in two. We sure are lucky there is a bridge over there. The small creature said to the Alva, feeling at ease. The creature was too afraid to approach the ominous chasm. The torch illuminated the chamber with its fiery glow. The creature silently stared into the dancing flames. The torch had been securely fastened to the wall. Well, let's go into the groove Hello? I guess that's a groove I feel like it's gonna look terrifying, because it already kinda does. I see claws and it looks very large. A hand-shaped rock. Okay, so I've seen a gigantic hand, and I've seen a gigantic foot. I wonder if I'll find more parts of whatever these body parts came from. I feel like they all came from the same creature. A hand, seemingly made out of stone, had at some point ended up halfway buried in the cave floor. The creature stared at the large hand for quite some time. I wonder, does this formation have something to do with the one I saw before? Precisely what I was thinking. Some connection? Maybe what I do to one would influence the other? The large hand felt cold, its surface coarse like stone. Blocked passage. I can't wait to leave these caves behind us. They're a bit creepy, aren't they? Do you know of a place on the outside that could help you get your wings to grow? The creature asked. The Alva shrugged her shoulders, looking back at it with big eyes. Oh well. I'm sure we'll find someone that can tell us what to do. The creature responded in an unsteady voice. Before we explore that, let's go back and talk to the... Grufren. Actually, let's try the elements first. Okay! Yeah, let's not do the one that makes incredibly creepy faces appear all over the walls. A little bit of candle wax pops out. Hmm. I can light them and I can blow them out. Let's have a chat. Deep within the mountain. Far away from any light of day, the gruff Fru lives by herself. Miners have been known to catch a glimpse of her in the corner of their eye, some claiming that she is showing them the location of large ore veins, others that she is trying to get them to follow her into the tunnels. If one is to venture into her domain, be mindful of making noise. If disturbed, she is said to bring the perpetrator to the deepest place within the mountain, where the unlucky being slowly turns into stone. You don't say. I guess whoever this was... made some noise and was turned into stone. Hmm. Do I want to speak with it? I don't know if I do. Let's try it! Noise, noise, always happens. 
hammering, striking the walls. Loud, foul beings. Strike, strike, strike. It is not theirs to take. The gruff Rue mumbled to herself, seemingly not noticing the small creature next to her. Unforgivable. Strike, strike, strike. The rock falls. A spell. Hide it. Yes. They won't leave. Why? They can't see where to strike. This won't do. My love. For a brief moment, the gruff Fru's voice became soft. Soon he will arrive. No, for him to see me like this, my appearance unsightly. Their fault. Strike, strike, strike. Then silence. Pristine. That's pretty sad. She's incredibly sensitive to noise. And the miners have been driving her crazy with their pickaxes. I should remember the order those lit up in. What if that actually means something? Oh, hell! That must be the third one! Yeah, that's gotta be the third one! Avata was hiding in a dark corner of the chamber, shaking wildly. Oh, don't be scared. It's fine. Who goes there? The fat Vata wailed as confidently as he could. Who are you? I don't know. The small creature said with a troubled brow. What do you mean you don't know? The fat Vata said as his fear turned to curiosity. I only recently found myself in this world. I don't know where I belong. The creature stated sadly. That's odd, the fat Vata said before turning silent, wondering if that was even possible. After a while, the fat Vata seemed to have regained his focus. Enough of your petty problems. Mine are far more severe and they just keep adding up. There I was, playing my flute as I was searching this wretched mountain after something to retrieve my and my brother's belongings with when she came running towards me. My music must not have been to her liking, I suppose. The fat Vata said, looking puzzled as he scratched his head. If she sees me again, I don't know what she will do to me. The fat Vata's eyes slowly filled with fear. Could you help me sneak past her? You can have my flute, and I'm sure my kin will reward you greatly. I suppose I could. The small creature responded, even though it was just as afraid as the fat Vata was. I think I'm taking him with me. Yes, I am. Stalagmite. <laughs> Robust roots and vines were blocking the small creature's path. If only my claws were sharp and pointy, the creature said, looking down at its dainty little hands. The vines were too thick for the creature to snap with its bare hands. I don't think I have anything to do that. Nope. The carvings inscribed on the wall formed a number of strange shapes and symbols. What do you think they mean? The small creature asked the Alva as it tried to make out the shapes of the mysterious carvings. I really don't know. They could be practically anything. All 
Alright, well, let's leave you alone. And let's go back and put you with the others. Brothers, the fat Vata said happily. I'm back again. It seems my brothers are disappointed with my efforts. The fat Vata said with a heavy sigh as he awkwardly took his place beside the tall Vata. If they are not willing to talk, I guess I will have to find you a reward myself. The fat Vata muttered as he rummaged around on the floor. It's not much, but here you go. I'm truly grateful for your help. What have you given me? Copper wire and a flute. Okay. Well, the flute would be a good idea for getting myself killed. So let's not do that. Copper wire. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. In that case, I have no idea. But there's much left to explore. Dried up river or the abandoned mine? Let's go to the dried up river. The chasm continued through the large opening in the wall. If we fell down there, we might never be able to get back up again. The creature said, reminding itself not to get too adventurous. The Whoops. The creature was too afraid to approach the ominous chasm. What was that? It just appeared. Whoa, there's a lot here. Flowing water can be heard on the other side of the cave wall. The skittish me men? Seems to have lost their belongings during a recent cave-in. The rambling... I think it's rambling. The rambling woman wants to prepare herself for her, love, her love's arrival. Mm -hmm. Bunch of stuff. A large boulder had fallen down and blocked the opening behind it. Do you think we could climb down there? The creature asked the Alva, who responded by giving it a disapproving look. I guess it doesn't want to die. Do you th the small creature pushed with all its might, but was unable to move the boulder even an inch. Let's see if my runes can do something here. Hmm. Whoa, neat. Doesn't look like it. Pretty as it is, it doesn't actually help me. Skulking in the shadows and move over to the smelter so I can see you. Hello, creepy monster thing that seems to be guarding a chest. Oh, I see. A couple of new sticky fingers made their way into my mountain. From atop a chest next to the smelter, a crouching Svartalv was glaring at the small creature and its new found friend. I shall make it simple enough for your tiny minds. 
Since this mine belongs to me now, I've decided not to give you anything at all. So go away. I've got enough sneaky sticky fingers to keep an eye on already. The small creature looked at its friend before trying to talk to the smart elf. I apologize for carelessly wandering into your home, but we would never take something that someone else values so highly. The smart owl frowned. Of course you wouldn't just decide to take a pleasant walk through the deepest parts of my mountain. Just because I've yet to find any treasure doesn't mean it doesn't belong to me. The smart owl reached into his pocket before throwing a small rock at the creature. There. Worthless piece of rock that you can have. There are plenty of those for you in these walls, sticky fingers. What a rude, rude person. Creature, monster, thing. Alright, between the fact that I have a rock and I have a twig that looks suspiciously like I could make a slingshot out of it, I'm thinking I actually need to make a slingshot. At some point. Hmm. I don't have the stuff yet. Beds, chests, or casts wouldn't stick. A lot of stuff with which to make things. In the far corner of the old mine, there stood what seemed to be a cast in the shape of a bell. The cast is empty, the creature said after taking a peek inside. The cast was far too heavy for the small creature to carry with it. Alright, so I'll need to use it here if I want to use it. I don't actually know what that is, though. What is a cast? Do you mean like a cast that you pour something into and it makes it in a certain shape? Like a mold or what? I don't know. Amongst the equipment stood a newly cut wooden pole, which looked to have been used to carry the heavy casts into place. This stick looks to be able to hold quite a bit of weight, the small creature stated. The creature decided to bring the wooden stick with it. I wonder if I'm ever going to be able to use these dried flowers and this iron coin. I've had them for so long. four beds, seemingly too short for someone of normal height. They don't feel very comfortable, the small creature stated as it walked across one of the beds. I wonder who's been sleeping here? Underneath one of the blankets, the small creature found an old stringless bow. That could come in handy. I don't have any string. I do have copper wire, but that's not exactly the same thing as string. Hmm. Hmm. A large smelter was burning hot in the middle of the old mine, spreading thick smoke throughout the cave. What incredible heat, the creature thought as it gasped for air. The small creature didn't want to move any closer to the hot smelter, being careful not to burn itself. Ooh, a pickaxe. In one of the cave walls, there was a pickaxe that looked to have been angrily struck deep into the rock. Oh, is it stuck in, inside so I can't get it out? Perhaps the owner gave up. The small creature pondered. Maybe sometime, like, years and years ago, maybe 50 years ago, someone was really, really angry and just struck it into the wall. And it's been there ever since. 
the pickaxe was firmly stuck in the cave wall. Let's see if I can loosen it. Aha! The earthquake had rocked the pickaxe loose, allowing the creature to pick it up. That should come in handy. See, is that it for this room? I think it is. I wonder if the pickaxe would allow me to get through here. Hmm. No. Hmm. Maybe I could use it on this rock. No, not here. Hmm. Apparently not. Okay, well, I'll figure out what to do in the next episode. I'm going to end this one here. Yeah, so, so far, I... Let me get a stretch in. Hold on. Oh, that feels good. Yeah. Oh. There's nothing like a good stretch. So, yeah, so far, I like it quite a bit. It... Um, the worries that I had heard about the puzzles being kind of nonsense are definitely true. They are. They're totally nonsense, and they feel like they're just trying to waste my time, but thankfully using walkthrough, and especially using the developer-provided walkthrough, which is quite handy. I appreciate that. At least it takes away a lot of the painfulness of it. Although it's still kind of annoying to have to read the walkthrough pretty much, like, two to five times every single chapter. It's kind of like, get, you know, like, make ten minutes of progress and then read it again, and then make ten minutes of progress and then read it again. Sometimes even less than that. So it's still a bit obnoxious, and I definitely do not like the puzzle design. However, I like a lot of the other parts of the game. I really like the sound design. A lot. I like the strangeness of the world. The the interesting creatures I keep meeting. Like, I'm just fascinated by these creatures. New, Every single time I meet, I meet something new. It's just some strange and fascinating creature, and I want to know more about it. I like how dark and creepy it is, and strange. It's eerie. And just overall really fascinating. And I like the art style too. I do. I actually, even though it's very, it's very dark, literally speaking. It's very, very dark. Everything's very gray, grayish, and just, yeah, super gray. But I actually quite like it. I just, yeah, I just wish the puzzles weren't nonsense, and I wish there was a hotspot indicator and stuff like that. But I'm still enjoying myself. Definitely. So, I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.